black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God. I woke up, then I logged in to that Urban X where they be flexing with that blog in. Put it down, cause my little homie called in. Had to bail him out, he in trouble with the law again. Black skin can't win in the white world. Seen a brother kill his own kid for that white girl. We ain't wanna go to school, but we had to. Every February, it was scary in them classrooms. Shimmy y'all, shimmy gay. Old dirty bastards can't own dirty slaves, so they own dirty masters. Black dot found the pot as a young and broke it down for a son. And now he serve it to the masses Black mass, man, it's time to rock I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God Black mass, man, it's time to rock I had to find a way, I couldn't find a job Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God Couldn't find a prayer, couldn't find a God Urban excellence, a product of my residence From four score to 44, Obama was the president I told mama I ain't trying to go to church. I'm like Adam, every Adam is a product of the dirt. And I've been reaping what he sowed. I got the product, got the dirt. And I can teach you what I know, but then you got him put in work. You in trouble if you waiting on the government. I told my bro I make it out the hood and that's a covenant. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, what's good, everybody? Yeah. What's good? Yeah. Urban X podcast. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We're back. In the building, in the flesh. Maybe not as live as we want to be. Yeah, man. Oh, gosh. Technology. Technology has just got us a little twisted. Technology, man. <clears throat> you know what I mean? It is what it is. But we're here. But we're here. We are here, in effect, in the building, trying to put on an amazing show, as always. Yeah. But uh, we had some technical technicals. Yeah, it couldn't go live like we usually do. Okay, that's cool. I mean, you know, it, it is what it is. We got a lot to cover, so yeah, we, we, we got to kind of... But we're going to have to figure that out. Yes, we are going to have to figure that out. Or somebody's going to get Alejandro. Or somebody, everybody in this mother going to mm-hmm. get Alejandro. You know everybody. You know what I'm saying? Same I could me. be watching the football game right now. Taking a knee with my man Cap. <laughs> right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. So that's what's good, man. How you been? We've been on vacation. Yeah, man. Well, we celebrated a birthday. You we celebrated a birthday. I celebrated the big five zero. Yeah, uh, it was great. Everything about it was great. Uh, you know, we got some nice gifts out the way. And actually, on my birthday, yes, I was in a given mood and took the kids and their best friends to see Drake concert. Yeah, it was dope. And Migos just got down. How's that to y'all? I was giving, yeah. you know what I mean? So you can't always receive. Sometimes you have to give. And then we also did a um, a special, you know, because we weren't doing a podcast, that we, we did a special, you know, birthday vid for you. Absolutely. And I thought that was great. Yeah, I thought that was dope. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Got yeah. into some insight what 50 is like for a guy growing up in the hood who yeah. never thought he would see 50. And, um, you know, just appreciative of the small things. Yeah, it was people like, oh, you just turned 50. And then I'm like, if you watch the video, absolutely, you would understand why what 50 is is, is a critical number. Yeah. Very significant number. Uh, I am the elder of my family now. My Both of my grandparents on both sides of my family. Everybody's gone. My mother and father are gone. Wow, that I'm the elder now. Wow. You should yeah. start treating me like that and bowing when you see me. But, but, you know, all that 50 stuff is cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, you know, your boy got a birthday coming up. Well, yeah, I was going to uh, segue into that. Uh, my birthday kind of leads into everybody else's birthday. Yeah. That's your what, birthday, then Marcus's birthday, then Odyssey's birthday, birthday, then, then uh, uh, Wifey's birthday, yeah. then Eli closes yeah. out the year for us. We got two Virgos, two Sages, and two Scorpios. Me. Uh, so we all kind of balanced in this particular household here. And uh, yeah, but I always set it off. So you know when mine come, everybody kind of line up. Yeah. And you're going to be uh, 25. 25. Let's not clap that what? up. Well, let's clap that up. <laughs> all right. We'll clap that up. We'll get that a clap. 
that's, that's big. No, that's big. 25 for a black man growing you know up saying? in the hood. No record? No drug record. No uh, criminal record. No, not smoked out. No baby mamas out no here? No baby mamas out here. So that is... Chilling. yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that is really, really a good look. You know what I'm saying? And um, I'm proud of you, as, you, as you already know. I appreciate that. Uh, you know, I got a really big turnout for the birthday party. You know, friends and family. Yeah. We did a day party. If you ain't up on these day parties, get up on them. Yo, day parties are the new thing, It's man. the new thing. I, I was home by 10. Right. I'm the birthday boy. <laughs> right. I was literally at yeah. home by 10, opening up cards and going, He, he this left was everybody. Like, I was still there. Yeah, like, I yo, just left. Like, yo, what's that? No, and I had I had got my drinks on, I had got my party on, yeah. and uh, you know I'm so in a routine as a elder now, you know what I mean, that uh, I was home, yeah. and I, it really gets no better than that. Uh, I got an amazing gift from uh, Marcus, my oldest son, yeah, man. a painting of my mother, father, me in the middle, and my two sisters. You'll get to know their story, uh, you know, when you read the book. But one of my sisters I hadn't seen for 46 years and had found a tractor down the other one i hadn't seen for 20 years so i've spent my life finding these uh individuals to make my family complete and this painting uh just really solidified it and made it all complete shout out to marcus for that Thanks. Yes. wasn't a dry eye in the house wasn't a dry eye in the house and then mark malcolm had the nerve to Give me some sneakers. I mean, you could have kept after your brother gave fair, you his fair. gift. First of all, no disrespect. First of all, I didn't know he was going to go that hard. Yeah, yeah he, you know went hard. he went hard. Yeah, he just yeah. kind of kept that in the tuck. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. Yo, you do you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we usually, you know yeah, what I mean? We usually communicate. And, yeah. then, and then we had a group text like, yo, what we doing for dad? Yeah, he, he had that nothing. laugh in the cut. He was like, nah, nah, I'm good, I'm yeah. good. <laughs> He said nothing. He kind of snaked me. He That's kind of wild. Yeah, he snaked you. He kind of snaked me on that. You gave me the sneakers. I was like, it was just like, I felt embarrassed giving it to like, you. I uh, was like, like snakers, huh? <laughs> he kind of tossed them. He ain't even, he was like, yeah, well, yeah, that's like, yeah, yeah, if no. you want them. But he did give me some <laughs> sketches, and you know how I feel about exactly. my sketches. How did you feel going in the sketches store? Did you feel weird? I was embarrassed. Because, you was embarrassed? Yeah, I was embarrassed because, like, the the the, um, the girls behind the register were kind of looking at looking me. Looking at you like, dude. Like, it was my gift. I'm just like, I'm just you? trying to explain <laughs> it. Like, no, this, this ain't, like, for me, this is like, you know, my my, my dad, yeah. they were sitting there going, uh-huh, sketches, huh? And then I looked bummy, too, because I just, like, went, you know oh, what I'm yeah. saying? I went just, yeah. you know, in the... Yeah. Why don't you get two pair? You know you get one yeah. half off, you know? You know what I'm saying? I just had, like, a white tee on and some sweats and sneakers, yeah. and I just yeah. went, yeah. and yeah. it was ugly. Yeah, it but we don't talk about that, because Nike's got some stuff going on, and, uh, you know, we'll, right, right, so right, we'll, right, we'll get right. into some subjects. However, uh, before we get started, uh, you know, the shirts we got on... Oh, yeah, yeah. They were brought to us by a group, uh, a clothing company called Yahweh. Yahweh, let's clap Yahweh up. Yeah, you can follow them on Instagram. I'll put the description. I mean, I'll put the yeah. Instagram in the description below. In the description below, you can get these T-shirts. Yeah, these are dope. These are dope. They feel comfortable. Yeah. I can tell they didn't skim on the material. You know how yeah. you get some shirts you could damn near see through. Back, now back, these back. these got a little weight to them. Uh, so shout out Yahweh. We appreciate that. Uh, we, you better get us your shirts yeah. now. Oh yeah, that, oh listen, the price is about to go. Up. Price is about to go up. Yeah, so if you got something you want us to wear, yeah, you don't even know. You have no idea, so you, you don't know, even know. You, you better, you, <laughs> you better get on. <laughs> 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 right, well. Yep. So let's get this thing started. What do we have on the docket, young man? Okay, so prior to uh, two weeks ago when we talked about Aretha Franklin's passing, right? Yes, yes. You yes. made a really bold claim. Yeah, on the podcast, I did. I did. You said, "Watch out for uh, the uh, top white people going out." Yeah. Within that time, you said they always going threes. Yeah, yeah. And then a week later, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Senator John McCain died. Yes, yes. Should we clap up his death or? Okay, so this is the thing. Mm -hmm. This is the thing. This is the thing. Would that be foul? No. Okay, it would be foul. But okay. in the context of what we're saying. In the context we were saying it wouldn't be what mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. don't don't touch the button. Don't touch the button. This is this is the only thing, right? Yeah. When people die, mm -hmm. I feel like even though whatever they've done, not whatever they've done, but I'm saying like we have to take into account that, you know, we're like us, black people, we have morals and things like that. So I don't think we should celebrate death that way. 
Explain yourself, young man, please. Like, okay, you remember when um, Osama bin Laden got killed? Yes. And then people were actually like parading in the streets, and I just like I, th- I thought that was weird. Yeah, but but you you gotta look in the context of what he true true no, no so called no, had I, done. I, I totally get that, so, but I don't that think sense. it warrants party celebration. Like yeah, he's dead, we murdered. I don't know. No, I don't but know. dude, I, I made know. a prediction. Fuck his life, dude. I made a prediction, man. Okay, this our show. Okay, shit, this ain't about him. <laughs> okay, shit. I made a prediction that his ass or somebody would go out. Yeah. Also, uh, Neil Simon, who's a playwright on Broadway, yep. he also went out. Major, he'd been on Broadway 30 years. He uh, filmed The Odd Couple for those who are my age who know what that is. He did a lot of, he went out. Okay. That's the arts as well. So right. we had a war hero in McCain going out. Right. We have somebody in the arts going yep. out. Yep. Um, and Robin Leach. The lifestyles of the uh, rich, rich and, famous. and famous. He went out, and somebody else on Broadway. The name escapes me at the moment. Oh, Burt Reynolds got he died today. Oh, he died today. He yeah. died today, but he, he he missed the he missed the gate. Oh, that's that was it. Now he's trying to go up, and he getting boom. You know mm. what I'm saying? He's like, let me get out and go boom, and he coming back down off, yeah, the, off was, the filament. I didn't you know. know what I, mean? I didn't realize it until somebody in our comments mentioned it. Like, yo, you was right. I'm yeah, like, yeah, whoa. yeah. So, so um. Th- these things happen, and he's he's a high uh, he's a high ranking yeah, war yeah you know uh, official. So okay, well, okay, I tell you what, another thing I found, and weird. I think I looked up his name. Uh, let me see, did I do uh, the geometria on his name? I think I did, and it said uh, sacrifice or something. But go ahead, continue. Uh, what I what I also found interesting was black people. Kind of just going hard. Oh my God, you know John McCain was a was a hero. A true American, and I'm just like, fam. Slow down. Slow you know what I'm saying? You don't have, and then w- it, it seems so disingenuous. Like, you're trying to do that to get favor, to get retweets. Yeah, to yeah, get, yeah. You know, nah, listen, if you don't know, John McCain voted at uh, least three or four times against uh, Dr. King's. Uh, yeah, to, to, to make that a holiday, to make right, that a day. Right, to make absolutely. that an official day. He's made many racist statements over his career. Absolutely. He called the former president of, of Iran a flat out monkey. Yes. So, and then doubled down and said, I can't take a joke. Oh, okay. You know so, what I'm but I thought it was gangster. He didn't invite uh, Trump. He said, <laughs> Trump can't oh, "Yeah, this, yeah, Trump, you can't come." Uh, nah, 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 nah. Yeah, I thought that was, I thought that and was uh, go back to Aretha for a few because, um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah uh, Aretha's situation. Um, first of all, and even though he died like a week later, um, their funeral was on the same day. Yeah, yeah. So, so that 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 was the solidifying aspect of yeah. it for me. You know what I mean? Is yeah. that. They they waited, you know what I mean? She died a week early, and they kind of waited yeah. to make sure. And then you kind of had to choose, like, damn, am I going to sit with Yo, Aretha? Or? Well, well, people were getting at uh, Obama because he went to McCain's funeral uh-huh. and not Aretha's funeral. But I think he had promised McCain. Yeah, I think, but didn't Bill Clinton go to both? I don't know, because well, her, her funeral was seven hours. Yeah. Shit, you could have <laughs> flew across yeah. country and made both. <laughs> yes. No disrespect. <laughs> I went to bed and woke up and it was still on. It was like it was a marathon. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I understand. It was like a, a music concert. It like. was like a concert. And then a lot of weird shit started happening. Yeah. There. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So can we get into some of the weird oh, shit? Let's, get, let's, let's talk about it. Okay. So um, so first of all, uh, the people that were giving the eulogy. Yeah. Uh, one uh, Sean man, he gave one of them donkey of the day because he was talking about uh, single single mothers can't raise yeah, black uh, men. Uh, I forget his name. His name is on the tip of my tongue. The did the, the guy who did the main eulogy. Yeah. In the comments section, you all know who I'm talking about. Um, and he just was going off on black lives matter. Yeah. Black lives don't matter because there ain't no fathers around. <laughs> and I'm like, nigga, Aretha's in the casket. She was a single mom of right. four. Like, you know what I'm saying? She was able to, you know, do what she did because she's a natural woman. I'm going to be here all day. That was a, okay. That was, that was a cool segue. Mm-hmm. Yeah, was, and she deserves R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Okay, you reach with that one. You reach with that one. You, you were doing all right. At least I can spell. Al Sharpton was oh. like, R-E-S-P-I-C-T. <laughs> I said, nah, this nigga's head done got really huge because of the steroids yeah. or whatever the fuck he's on. But his spelling was yeah. bad. So the eulogy was a little twisted. Uh, it was a concert. 
Ariana Grande situation. Oh, let's talk about that. Dude. Was was a little off base. First of all, uh, she looked like a twelve year old boy. I want to start there, and because that's critical when we start talking about the way these older men were looking at her on stage. Remember, these are pedophiles. I, I, I gotta throw this into the mix here. She was improperly dressed that's for never, a black funeral. Ah, uh, come on. You've never gone to a black funeral and seen at least two of your family members? Like, what? No, no, listen. Not for the people in the audience. You trying to get attention. It's a fashion show. You can have all kind of things going. When you are on the stage okay. and you are praising the dead of somebody of her magnitude, mm -hmm. somebody on your team should have been like, yo, listen, I know you're only 20. Like, at least bring it down below the ankles out of, you know, because they will talk about you in church. Right. They will talk about okay. you, right? She looked like a 12-year-old boy. I want to start there for a reason because as she, uh, the reason, uh, what's his name? What's this? This is name? Charles H. Uh, Pastor Charles H. Ellis the third. Yeah, yeah, the third, whatever. Him. Yeah. Um, listen, the way he grabbed her. Yeah. I dude. gotta be clear because I heard some people saying, "Well, he ain't really." Listen, I know how to touch a woman, right? And there's certain subtleties. You can hit the upper back, the lower back. You can hit the side of the thigh. You can use your elbow to kind of... There are ways that women understand this language. Like, yo, my nigga, that was a little... Right. You know, I see where you're going with that. Right. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm with it, because I always talk about if Denzel touch you on the lower back, it's okay. If I touch you, you in HR saying it's sexual harassment <laughs> and you were part of the Me Too movement. So I get that. You know what I mean? Okay. Where he touched her. Yeah. And then he repositioned himself to get more of that time. Oh, man. Did you see her face? Yeah. She yeah. went like, so women know, even if you bump up on them on the train, you know, be weirdos yeah. and shit, they just know what's subtle, what's not. It's an unwritten language. And her expression told me all I needed to see. Right. Then he went in on a spiel about uh, tacos and shit. So oh, yeah, he just said, the whole Mexi Mexican uh, yeah, he population. Yeah, he said her name was... Uh, 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 something on the fucking menu. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So that whole process. But you got to remember, and I'm going to tie all of this into Aretha. Her dad, right, was banging out 12 and 13-year-old girls. Who Aretha's dad. Really? Absolutely. As a matter of fact, has she been dead long enough for me to talk about this? No, okay, so let's keep it moving. But her dad had to move from where they lived because he had got a 13-year-old girl pregnant. This is, this is news. Everybody knows this. This is not... Okay. Yeah. And her two children, she had one at 12. One at, yeah. And one at 13 and... No, no, we're not going <laughs> to... No, no. No, but the, what I'm saying is yeah. she said the father was unknown. Okay. But we now have... <laughs> Enough data to, to put two and two together and say something weird is going on. I, now, now, with that being said, like we ain't seen y'all in two weeks, man. Yeah. I, I'm, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bloated and shit with information. But um, her father hung out with Dr. King. Oh. And Jesse Jackson, Messi Jesse. And they all hung out and their thing was young girls. You know what I'm saying? You got to remember back then. Even though we know it's always been morally wrong, it wasn't looked upon mm -hmm. as, as crazy as it is now for a 12 or 13 year old girl because we know that incest and how that shit works inside the home. And she adored her father and, you know, just kind of one of those uh, things. So I thought that whole process was weird. Okay. Right? That they were gawking Bill Clinton. Oh, yeah, that look, it just looked, it just looked crazy. bad. Like, yeah. dude, are you serious? You supposed to be, him out of all people, but, yo, it's supposed to be like this. Yeah. You ain't supposed to look at the side. You ain't supposed to peek your eyeball over. I thought it was also telling the way people were defending the pastor. Yes. Afterwards. Like Again, this is this is what we're dealing with. The pastor just gotta say, let's pray together. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. need to get me a real good Christian girl yeah. and fuck up and be like, You caught me. Let's pray. That was the devil at work. Girl, let's pray. So yeah. we can move on into the next time I fuck up. Yeah. So him out of all people, you know, Clinton should have just kept oh, his yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I will not look to the side. I will keep my eyeball straight. And then I see Hillary looking right at me, right on to the side. And side note, all of the people on this side, the body count, 
Dog, I was I was literally going there. Son, the body count. I was you took yeah. Ooh. You talking about the people on the stage. The people on the stage, they all got a body count yeah. that was Messi, Jesse, Sharpton, Clinton, the, the three strikes and out, Farrakhan. Oh, come on, let's talk about and let me hold on, let me say that because I got my Farrakhan, I'm a Farrakhan support on my whole crew. You know what I'm saying? But he did say he helped foster the atmosphere that got Malcolm X assassinated and brought about the particular energy, and he didn't care too much about it that it happened. Now, we know there was some government shit involved, but the government always got, you know, agents mm -hmm. on the ground. So I want to throw that out there because I don't want the Farrakhan crew to come get me because I'm, I'm Farrakhan all day. But I said, damn, Jesse has something to do with King, mm -hmm. Farrakhan, who they was distancing themselves. Yeah. They were treating this nigga like he had the plague and yeah. shit. Uh, you know, Clinton and shit, and, and, and people they done killed out in Haiti, and Sharpton is an agent, and it just, it just, it just got crazy. This Boule team that was on the stage was, was scary. Was fucking scary. That's all I'm gonna say. And including the pastors who continued to come up yeah. and uh, do their thing and, and make this a political, because the guy who did the main eulogy, I forget his name, uh, it'll did, come to me. First of all, one of them called Bill, still, in 2018, still called <laughs> Bill Clinton the first black president. The first black president. We look so stupid. And this is going to segue for our whole show today of what we accept and what we do not accept. We look stupid. This is getting out of hand. You know what I mean? <clears throat> And we understand Aretha, and I did just a little bit of a, a geometria on her name. And geometria is when we take somebody's name and we do a numeric value on it to give us kind of like a, a, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Where it could go with her name. And um, I just did Aretha, and the vibe, uh, it came up uh, 53. And 53 is killed, 53 is iconic, and 53 is legendary. Just some of the code words. <clears throat> that carry the same vibration. Now, when I put a whole name in, it was 138. And that gave me music sacrifice, mm -hmm. a beautiful mind against all odds, and Fifth Amendment. So I don't know, uh, you know mm -hmm. where that ties in politically because you know we have some issues hmm. uh, uh, regarding some things there. So I just wanted to add that. And we know Aretha, uh, when you anagram her name is Earth, uh, Earth, when I anagrammed her whole name, Aretha Franklin, and the anagram is just when you scramble up the letters to see what kind of words uh, come out of this person's name, again, okay. carrying similar vibrations. Her whole name gave us fraternal. So maybe like a part of the fraternal order or mm. something. When you looked up on the stage, oh, nothing but boule, you know what I mean? So nine letter word came out of Aretha Franklin. It was only one nine letter word, and that was fraternal. Wow. So we know when we start dealing uh, <clears throat> with that, uh, you know, we, we kind of get that kind of stuff. So that was just some of the things uh, that I was able to uh, assess with Aretha Franklin. R.I.P. Aretha, the uh, Queen of Soul. Um, Eartha is also uh, an anagram of Aretha, Eartha right. Kitt, right. who uh, passed uh, uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Uh, on Christmas, she went out on the 25th. Oh, right. And remember, uh, this seven vibration, a lot of these people go out on the seven, right? James yeah. Brown went out on uh, 25th. Uh, Aaliyah went out on the 25th of August. Oh, when did, uh, when did Aretha Franklin? Play? She went out on the 16th, and one in six is still seven. Ooh. Michael Jackson went out on the 25th. Uh, you know, so you get a lot of people going out on, on this seven. Tupac was 25. I believe uh, uh, Biggie was 25. So you get this mm. this seven energy. I think Prince went out. I got to find out when Prince went out. Uh, you know, find out his death. You can kind of get that number. But um, th that, that energy uh, resonates for some uh, yeah. particular reason with a lot of our musical icons. And as we mentioned, Burt Reynolds uh, went out today. And uh, I remember Burt. Yeah, yeah Burt was kind of like a heart drop. You know, for yeah, uh, yeah, but yeah, he looked. He's eighty two. I didn't know he was that old. Yeah, yeah, he uh, yeah, he went out. He went out. You know, mm -hmm. but he missed. He missed the window. Boom! He hitting the filament, coming back to earth. That's not nice, there. Oh, well, it is what it is. <laughs> I'm just gonna call it. You know, like I said, you are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. So another week, another week another. of your boy of, huh? of Trump. Yeah. So uh, apparently, a few days ago, two days ago. 
an anonymous or oh, the New York Times ran an anonymous story. Uh, apparently, it was from somebody, a senior official in the uh, Trump administration. That's in the in the White House. Yeah. Okay. So <clears throat> usually, you know, when you hear anonymous sources, you don't really take that seriously. But the New York Times, you know, they don't really run with trash. So, so it gives it a little credence, yeah, and credibility, because it was the New York Times. So basically, the person is saying that um, within the actual administration, there are people working behind the scenes trying to correct what Trump is doing. And they're trying to stop him from doing other things. They're trying to stop him from doing a lot of things too, but they're saying that, um, you know, it's, it's difficult because you, you, like, because they're in the public eye <clears throat> and a <throat> lot of people are trying to, a lot of people are trying to stop them because they're uh, followers of Trump, but they're also trying to work behind you. So it's like, it's a weird, triple, uh, 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 double, triple yes, agent. Like it's, things it's a going lot on. going on. Yeah. I even heard he ordered, uh, the hit on a Syrian leader, and his general told him, we're going to do that, and as soon as they got the phone, he said, yo, we're not going <laughs> to So that's crazy. I heard there was a bill on his desk that he was going to sign, and somebody just took the bill yeah. away, and he was eh, I knew there was a bill here. Yeah. Now there's no bill. So they call I him, don't know what's going on. Yeah, as a result of the of that article, people are calling for the uh, invoking of the 25th Amendment. Which is rare. Explain this 25th Amendment. So the 25th Amendment uh, calls is is when a uh, president dies or is disabled or cannot, you know, they physically can't do the job of the presidency. So the vice president will, uh, will take over Ooh. permanently, right? Ooh. So people are saying that Trump, because of books from like Bob Woodward, I don't know if you, you know him. He was no, from, I'm not familiar. He was from the Watergate case. Oh, right, right. He's He actually has a book coming he out. Has, it's a book. I think it's out already. Okay, okay. And people are saying that, you know, Trump is literally mentally unfit to do that job. Okay, okay. So people are saying, uh, you know, um, you know, we should invoke the 25th Amendment, even though I think that's a little reach. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I feel like you would need a lot to prove somebody is mentally unfit. But according to this report, it almost sounds like they have to do something. But according to... But so... Uh, everybody's uh, within the administration is saying that wasn't me. They, they so does Mike Pence. Mike Pence said it wasn't me. Um, uh, they so they don't know who the leak is. No, they don't know who the leak is. No. Nope. So everybody's a suspect. Yes. Mm. But again, I don't know if we want Pence in there, B. No, no, I, I don't. I don't think you want Pence. Uh, you, you damn if you do, and you damn if you don't. Yeah. Uh, you know, with, with this administrative, because Pence looked like he 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 ready to put that work in. You know, do you, don't you think that I feel like we're spending too much energy on trying to get him out rather than trying to build for us? As a you mean black As a, people? Black people, yeah. Well, well, well we we're the masters of being distracted. Yeah, you know what I mean. So our energy is a lot of time what feeds this. Now there's another guy called Q Ran or something in the Patriot community. And they speak about him or uh, being in the White House. And leaking information of a lot of things that Trump is doing that is supposed to be good. Mm. You know what I mean? And when you say drain the swamp, remember that a lot of times, I, as I speak about, this is a war that we only get bits and pieces and, and, and chunks that come off the table that we can even process what's going on. Because uh, I've always been taught a, 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 a wise man can play the role of a fool. But a fool can never play the role of a wise man. Yeah, that, that, so I don't know it, if I spoke about this on the podcast, but I watched a documentary on Trump on Netflix, mm. and it showed like his younger days, like his rise, and you know, and he is the epitome of white supremacy mm. in the sense that he literally does whatever he wants without morale. Like he doesn't look at morality. Like, what? Yeah. I'm going to do that. Right. And what it was telling to me was in his younger days, it was some building that he was trying to get off the ground in Manhattan. Mm -hmm. And when he was explaining the building, it looked complete opposite from what you see at a presidential ah, podium. Ah. He looked sharp. He knew exactly what his points were. He he knew statistics. He knew all of that. So I'm just like, yo. And now he looks crazy. Now he looks unhinged. You know what I'm saying? Unhinged. Hmm. So like, I feel like he's playing stupid. Listen, listen. As my man, the Joker said, it's all a part of the plan. Right? Mm -hmm. Pay very close attention. And if he's out of there, he's supposed to be out of there. If you see Pence in there, right. that's a part of the plan. 
Don't ever forget that because that's how they get down. And no, we don't want that. Be like Pence is a Pence is uh, a is a professional politician. Absolutely, Hegelian. A, but now we go back to the Hegelian right, dialect. Right, right, right. They got the sandwich. They right. got the problem right. mm-hmm. and the solution. They're just waiting for your reaction to reach a fever pitch mm-hmm. where something has to be done. Now, up under that are these pure white folk, the pure one hundred percent racist white folks who are ready to tear this country up. If something does happen to Trump, right. these are just triggers. These are people who... Uh, and it, he said that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If, if you get rid of me, yeah, he, the body count is yeah, going to go up in this country. He said expect violence. Like Expect violence. So we have to understand... He definitely said that. That there are you know bits and pieces and layers. And we here at Urban X, we don't have the answers to this. We're just trying to throw some stuff up on the board mm-hmm. so that our decoders and, and, and you know what I'm saying, in, in, in the... Uh, the ch- not the chat, the uh, comment, comment section, section yes. can start a conversation and we can kind of put this together because there are some things going on in this country that just don't, they just don't fit well. Yo, I, one, of my thing, one of the things I always bring up to people when they're so gung-ho on Trump being an actual problem or, you know, we should have rolled Hillary, whatever, right? Think about the fact that Hillary Clinton and Bill Clinton, they're millionaires, right? Yes. What they, because they're millionaires, they benefit directly from Republican ideologies and policies like tax and things like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And we're not going to talk, and then let's not even go into the fact that they rape Haiti. Like, uh, oh, blind. Um, funds. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And where, where is the money for that? Those, and you know every time somebody begins an investigation, something happens to them. Exactly. All right? Side note with that, my man Hakeem Green from Channel Live and my son mm-hmm. put out a dope new song called Dump Trump. Uh, I'm not sure what the website is. Go to uh, madism.com, I believe that is. And it's a dope breakdown of, and you know, you know my disposition that Trump is not the problem, but I understand there are layers, because I just got mm-hmm. finished saying there are layers to this. So yeah, we do need to dump Trump, mm-hmm. but that's not going to solve the problems, but it doesn't mean that we can't remove that asp you know that target so sometimes we get caught in the right and wrong and right. you could be right and wrong you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. at the same time so we always speak about layers so yeah and my son was recently at the uh kavanaugh uh, at the yeah hearing. at the hearing because that uh, kavanaugh is uh the is trump's supreme court nominee nominee and uh he, he was at the uh yeah so hearings. Well, so him He's he's kind of he's a interesting case because he doesn't you know he has like his views on abortion absolutely absolutely so people are afraid that if he gets in he'll be the fifth vote to overturn uh, cases like Roe versus Ro- Ro- Wade Roe versus Wade yeah and things of that nature and then people are saying that he has emails you know talking about it so they there I think are some I, damaging emails some damaging out here emails and I think they're trying to release them. Uh, I think Cory Booker is his name. Yeah, Cory Booker, the senator. The senator Cory Booker. He said he will have his team release those emails, no matter what the punishment is for him. Okay, so we're gonna keep our eye on that. Sitting behind uh, Kavanaugh. Oh yeah. Was uh, Zena Bash, and she had the white white supremacy yeah. symbol, uh, you know, rocking. And and you know it's crazy because like at first she she didn't have it up. Right, and then it looked like she got a text from somebody, and then told them to th- throw that up, throw it up in the thing. And you know what I'm saying? When you see this, it's three sixes. You know what I'm saying? And it becomes a symbol right. now for white supremacy. We know it as six electrons, six neutrons, and six protons, which is the basis of melanin, which makes us better than you. <laughs> now today they had uh, uh, Condoleezza Rice sitting behind him. Okay. They trying. To, I guess they must have picked up on right. that that energy yeah. as well. So you know, just some things to kind of think about. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. Uh, you want to talk about Eminem? Oh, let's get into that. So Eminem, he he dropped an album Friday. Friday, yes. Yeah, that was the thirty, the thirty first. Yeah, yeah. Friday yeah. was the thirtieth. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. So he dropped an album called Kamikaze. Kamikaze. And you know he took some shots at people. He said some names. I listened to the album. Took some shots. Said some names. Yeah, I listened to the album. <clears throat> I thought he rapped very well on it. Okay, okay. Because, you know, he, he's a great rapper. Like, he can he can rap. Okay. Uh, I thought he rapped very well. Uh, it was way better than his last album. Uh, uh, Revival. Think, Revival. Yeah, that was, terrible. that was terrible. Trash. That was terrible, Kenny. Yeah, that was I don't, terrible. I don't, know, I don't know, you know, his 
activism thing he was trying to get after. Yeah, he was, was trying to ride a wave. Mm-hmm. That's what, and it was really disingenuous, and I feel like people saw through it. I'm actually proud of people, <clears throat> proud of people of seeing through Absolutely. it. Absolutely. You know Absolutely. Know what I mean? Yes. Um, yes. But uh, the, the, the reaction I saw on social media behind, you know, this album was... You know, Eminem killed the killed the industry. He killed your favorite rapper. Um, mm-hmm. The goat is back. He's back in form, and I don't agree with that with so those sentiments. That? So I wrote an article on Urban X at NYC. Plug, plug, uh, go check that out. I actually put that in the description below. Urban X dot NYC, and I believe it was called Eminem is a legend. He's not a rap god, but he's not a rap god or the goat, and he's not the goat. And I gotta clap that up. Yeah. yeah. So what were some of your points that you made on that? Well, was, my main point is he raps very well. We're not taking that from him. Mm-hmm. But what has he done, him, Eminem, done to push anything in hip-hop forward? He pushed white people forward. He did. Continue. I'm not rolling with that Okay, one. okay. All right. But because I feel like people get mesmerized by the fact that he's white and can rap. Absolutely. So Absolutely. people put him on a tier, on a, on a pedestal that's just like, uh, I'm not rolling. And then I feel like people get, uh, you know, caught off, like, mesmerized with the fact that he raps fast, too. So they feel like he's saying a lot. But really, he's just, and Joe Budden had some of the same sentiments. My article came out first, though. Facts. You know Facts. What I'm saying? My article came out first. But uh, Joe Budden said the same thing. Like he just raps words very well, uh-huh. and I don't feel like um, you know. So the media has this thing where we they're able to implant ideas in your head, right? Inception, you, right? You think so? Yes. Okay. Okay. But it's really it's really telling once you get into debates like these, like Eminem and things like that, mm-hmm. because Eminem he had you know. Um, he came out really strong with his albums. Then he came out with Eight Miles. So people think, for some odd reason, that when it comes to battles, that Eminem is just not to be touched. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right? He's but created kind of like a, a mythos, a mis- yeah, a mystique, mythology, yeah, yeah a mystique around, about him yes. around him. But like, don't you know? If he says your name, don't come at him. It's over, yeah, right? Yeah. But if you really peel back the layers of who he's actually battled, Benzino. Benzino's not a rapper. Not a rapper. He had the Source magazine. He's, yeah, he's not yeah, a rapper. Yeah. Nick Cannon. Oh, I can, uh, I, can, not, I can beat Nick right now. Nick Cannon. Facts. He tried to credit himself for Ja Rule, but we're not going to do that. 50 that was 50 body, body Ja Rule. Just stop. And you kind of just snuck a punch yeah, in. Yeah, you snuck a punch in while he was down. Was, yeah, yeah, as he was down. Who else? Um, and a whole bunch of white people. You know, uh, Britney Spears. Britney, uh, Mariah Carey. Mariah Carey. His baby mother. His baby mother. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But oh, nobody notable. And he also went at Jermaine Dupree, but that was Dre. Yeah, but come on. Come yeah. On, come yeah. On. You, you get no points for that. You get right, no right, right, points right, right. for that. So, uh, um, as a response, um, MGK, Machine Gun Kelly, put out a diss track called Rap Devil mm. and went off. Yeah, he had some bars in there. Yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Like my, my boy put it in the chat, and I was like, I'm not going to listen to this. But then I was like, yeah, let me see yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he went off. I was like, whoa, okay. Let me tell you, me and Eli were actually, because Eli's an Eminem fan, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's just his position. He like your Eminem's, but right after we listened to the Eminem album, yeah. we listened to the MGK. Yeah, and Eli was like, "Oh, he wanted to say, oh shit, <laughs> right?" He was like, "Yo, dad." And I was like, "No, Eli, let's go over the album." Where he's a nah, nah, nah. M got to respond to this. Yeah. So, I think he hit key points. Mm-hmm. And let me know when it's my turn to get into yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. You sure? Yeah. Okay, because um. 15 years ago, I wrote an article called White Men Can't Rap. All right? It's in my first book, Hip Hop Decoded. And uh, I did it because white men can't rap. And what I mean by that is, on the surface, we have become such surface-gazing people. Mm -hmm. Our whole life, it's exoteric now. That all we're doing is listening for words that rhyme. And sure, he's very technical in how he puts words together. But he can't hear what I can hear. All right? He's not a highly melanated being. We speak a lot about the third eye. I like to speak about that third ear, that inner melanin that we can just pick up. This is scientific fact. You can go Google this. We can pick up sounds that white people just can't pick up. And that's your key to why he can't possibly 
uh, rhyme deep within the cut the way we do. You know what I mean? So he's a surface rhymer who is very technical, right? Right. I saw, I forget the name of the documentary, I think it was called Scratch, where they was taking Grand Theater, Wizard Theater, he was scratching, and they were converting them shits into musical notes so that white DJs could they could make, so they're very linear in their understanding of how this, this is a spiritual thing that we do. You can't invoke or prevoke uh, the magical shit within words if you do not reside from a deep spiritual melanated place. Mm. All right? And black people are never off tempo. Yeah, we can always find the beat. I must say that it, if yeah. you are black and you are mm. off tempo, then you need to find yourself because I don't care where the beat fall. So it gives us the cheat sheets as we call. We call these the cheat sheets. You know what I'm saying? And in the cheat sheets, we can find and hit rhythms. And this is why a lot of his music that he chooses is uh, very uh, uh, techy mm -hmm. and very, because that low vibration, bass bottom, deep melanated root and sacral chakra music, he will get lost within it. And that's all I was trying to say when I broke this down and it wasn't a racial thing, but it is. I mean, yeah. if you are not a highly melanated being, now there'll be people who say, well, we got, they got rappers now who a lot of these rappers ain't white. A, every, a lot of these people are mixed now. Oh, yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? So you don't know where, you know, the mm, source of true. their energy comes from. I, I, I just, it bothers me when it comes to speaking about Eminem of like the legends that, oh, that go to bat for him. Like, yo. Oh. He's 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 the best. Like, Rakim uh, said some things. Ugh. Like, come on. He said if he was black, he'd be the greatest ever. And I had to like, Ra, you you my hero, dude. And for you to right. say that, and you know your lesson, so you know who this is, and so forth and so on. This dude is from the Caucasoid Mountains. I can't even vibrate with none of his music. Don't get me wrong. I like Stan. I like uh, uh, Toy Soldiers is probably my favorite. Toy thing. Soldiers, Lose Yourself, Here lose and your, There. Oh, yeah, Lose Yourself is hard. That joint he did with Rihanna was nice. Mm. You know, I thought it was nice. It was okay, it was cool. But I don't know no brothers pulling up, I mean, when, banging. When Lose Yourself came out, that was... But but look at the track. The track had... Yeah. Boom, 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 yeah. boom. That was, you know, yeah, that arms was Arms are sweating. Knees weak, arms are heavy. There's vomiting on the sweater already. Mom's spaghetti, he's nervous, yeah. but on the surface, he's calm and ready to drop bombs, but he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. So he went through it now. He, he has a cheat sheet he uses too, because he uses words that don't rhyme. I'm from an era that was very technical in terms of words that, so phonetically he found some things mm -hmm. that he can rhyme, mom's spaghetti with on forgetting and you know this and that, and we know that shit don't technically right. rhyme, and you know, uh, you know, things of that nature. But at the end of the day, uh, 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 Joe Buttons is gonna whip his ass. Yeah, I don't think he went with Joe. Joe gonna whip his ass because Joe is going to first of all be in the pocket, and Joe is just gonna flow all of that super that 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 shit is gone. That era has gone. Yeah, you need to slow this down so we can hear what the hell you're yeah. saying. And his voice is super duper annoying. I did like him on Renegade. Side note, I did like him yeah, on Renegade. Yeah, but that Renegade was hard. I, I thought he he uh, he got Jay on that. There'll be discussions about no Jay got him. I think he got Jay on that. I just think because uh, I think this is going to play a major theme in you know a lot of what we talk about. We give way too much credit to nostalgia. Absolutely, absolutely. You know what I'm saying so. If you break down, if we when we break down our legends and things like that, when we, and we go back and then we peel back the albums, like I wasn't really that good. Absolutely, absolutely. But, I, you, but well, you remember how it made you feel at the time, and then Facts. you bring it ten years, twenty Facts, years. Because into, e even when I heard "Hi Kids," do you want to take yeah. off your eyelids? Right. I was like, "What the fuck is this? This, this shit ain't." But I understood it from a marketing standpoint. Mm -hmm. What Dre was doing, Dre needed that. Right. Dre needed him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? So I understand, uh, you know, how it could put him in position, Eminem, who's very technical in his wordplay, but words don't make the MC, dude. Tupac is a perfect example. Yeah. His had no clever wordplay whatsoever, but the resonance of his words, 
hits your soul. Right. Right? So when I break down, you know, what the composition of an MC is, it's more than just your vocabulary. It's stage presence, it's style, it's what did you say, it's how did you make the people feel, mm -hmm. it's the, 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 the spiritual asses. What can you manipulate around the person you're battling in terms of the earth, air, fire, water to put them in a situation? And I think if Joe Buttons who I, I I don't know. He needs to get my books. You know what I mean? Maybe he does. Yeah, Jeff, we'll, we'll talk about that yeah, later. Yeah. Before he goes to war with Eminem, because then he'll be able to box him in, and it would be nothing that that devil can do. And that's just what I had to say about that. All right. Yeah. Okay. So do you think he even responds to MGK? I don't think he responds. Uh, yeah, he has to respond. I think he. he you lit the fire. I don't think he will. You lit the fire. Now, now, but now I, Drake has created. A scene where now nobody uh, responds? No. You know what's crazy? As as all the credit we give Eminem as a battle rapper, Drake has had more formidable battles than Eminem. I don't know about that. I think Eminem was a battle rapper growing up. No, no, no. Okay, we're not talking about that. I'm okay, talking about okay. in, as, a, as a mainstream oh, artist. Mainstream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we, we, we can't... Uh... And lately, uh, uh, I think Drake is getting ready to fuck somebody up. I think it's going to be oh, Kanye. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Kanye's been apologizing <laughs> publicly <laughs> yeah. for some shit. Like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry yeah. I did these things. So something is about to pop off. Yeah. And either Kanye is apologizing because Drake is going at his shoes. So, you know, we got this shoe war going on. Yeah. We're going to talk about things of that nature. Or oh, he getting ready to drop the Kim Kardashian Listen, bomb. Listen, I think he's been hinting at it. That might be his baby. I just started some fake news. Yeah, shit. come That's on. Right. Yeah. Come on. Wait. But wouldn't that be crazy? <laughs> Instead of Northwest, <laughs> it's really north where Toronto is. You know what I'm saying? Wouldn't that shit be like Northwest? Oh, man. All right, all right. So uh, that, uh, scratch that from the... Uh, <laughs> From the records, but I'm just simply saying stranger things have happened. So, um, what else do we have going on? So, uh, I got Joe Buttons in that battle. Hey, I do too. If it pops. Yeah, That's yeah. just me. I do too. I think, and see, Joe ain't got no fear. Joe is, is dictating it. He like, get me out of bed. Say something that's coming. And he was eating on his podcast. Yeah, but you know what's crazy? He was eating in his guts. But this is also crazy too, because um, um, Crooked Eye, he was also in Slaughterhouse with Joe. Right. right? And he was talking about it. He was talking about how Joe is using Inception too. Oh, he's planting shit. He's planting because he's saying you're talking about content, right? Mm -hmm. So if he, so by the time if Eminem comes out and he's just rapping around and he's not saying nothing, we're automatically gonna go. You're not, you know, what I'm saying you, you lost already because Joe has. Hey, hey you gotta content. use. You have to use the media in any way you can. And he's using it beautifully. In this day and time. The media is critical yeah. of your war. So if you're going to war with somebody, you got to plant some seeds. Yeah. You got to go two or three levels down, make a nigga have a kicker chair, yeah. and come up and get that shit. You got to do all of that shit. Because the, the public is not very bright. We have already established that. And this is also just uh, interesting because like it's just showing that a lot of superstars, right? And we're going to get to that next. A lot of superstars don't know... How to decline gracefully. Yes. Be and not necessarily decline gracefully. You have nothing else to prove. Right. So now you are making music strictly for the artistic expression right. of it. And this album that he put out, this kamikaze shit, seemed to be like he had something else to prove. Yeah. Like he was listening. Now all of a sudden he on Facebook or he listening to what people were saying. And that's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Unless you know how to navigate. Because now he's in... Joe Button's world. Yeah. Joe Button's unplugged and, and started fucking with, you know, Instagram mm -hmm. and all that shit. So now you're in his world where he controls the rules yep. in this realm. You control the rule in Hollywood and all that other shit. That shit no longer exists. Yeah. The people are tuned in to things in real time. And if you ain't got your avatar correct so that you may participate yep. in this shit, you're going to get fucked. And so pay very close attention and then when you still think you're nice and you're not, right? That happens right. too. Uh, people, they, they, if they think Eminem, because I don't think he even. I think if he went out with Drake, I think Drake would smoke him. Drake would smoke him like motherfucking people, cigars. People thinking they're thinking that B Rabbit from Eight Mile. You know what I'm saying? They're not thinking of Eminem. Oh. They're thinking of B Rabbit. Like for who has he battled? Dude, he ain't battled nobody. 
And when you punch the bully in the mouth, right? Mm -hmm. Tyson said it best. You be training till your ass get punched in the Yo, mouth. And the, all in that the shit goes out of the window. And the battle um, versus Mook and Averb in the middle of the battle, like at the, I think at the end of his first round or his second round, he said, Yo, he bleeds. That's. Yes. You know what I'm saying? That's. Yes. The, the the that's a good uh terminology in Rocky three or four when he fought uh Von Draga Dra yeah, Drago yeah and he caught him and he that blood came right. down it was like oh okay he bleeds. so yeah all somebody got to do is test him yeah and Machine Gun Kelly might be a preliminary round yeah and and Buttons is sitting back and going let me how, let me see how you deal with this. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because uh, 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 this Machine Gun Kelly got a nice little following, mm -hmm. and if you think he's not formidable, then why did you say his name? So you 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 called this yeah. up. You know what I mean? Yep. So so now you got to deal with it. Yeah. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. Shout out to the Urban X Nation. Uh, so I don't think we ever got to this. Uh, Who the hell is, is that? Asia Arrigo. Oh yeah yeah yeah. Um, her and her former co-star. So she's one of the first people that came out during the Me Too movement. Right, right. She came out through the Global Awards, right? No, no. Yeah, it was yeah, the Global the, the, Awards that she the made Golden, this. The Golden Globes. The Golden Globes that she made this huge yeah. stand, right? It was against, Me Too. It was against um, Weinstein. Right? Was it Weinstein or I, she kind of put all of them on? Yes. Yeah. That was very interesting. Right. So she uh, apparently it was a photo going around that she was having. Uh, a, a sexual relationship with one of her seventeen-year-old co-stars. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Right, and then she paid. The, she paid uh, hush money. She did pay him hush she money. She paid him hush money, and this is the picture right here, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Damn, I gonna never. Set, when I was seventeen, none of the supermodels came up and and then no, she, to teach people, me some things. People found text messages saying, you know, I wasn't raped, like about you know about the kid. I wasn't raped. I wanted it. You know, I, I felt safe with them, stuff like that. So. This is very interesting because, first of all, she was doing all of this while she was giving her speech. Yeah. So the backdrop is you knew you was dirty. Now, with that being said, I keep telling y'all, this is a war. Mm -hmm. It's all a part of the plan. Yeah. Harvey's team could be on this. Yeah. Like, let's discredit yeah. the face of the Me Too movement mm -hmm. or the new faces. We yeah. know that black lady yeah, is yeah. the one who originally started it. I right. don't know her name. Uh, so, and we don't want to discredit. I want to be clear when we up here just having fun and tossing ideas around. We don't want to discredit real life victims. Yeah. The ones who see the Me Too movement as an opportunity to come out mm -hmm. and tell their story. We applaud them. <laughs> but along with that comes those who are opportunist those who are looking to manipulate situations. So we have all of that in the mix. It's like if the building fall at 9-11, it was people showing up saying they was in the building. And no damn well you wasn't in the building yeah. trying to get checks cut and you know things of that nature. So uh, Harvey Weinstein, recently somebody else who came out against him uh, had to not almost backtrack their statement. I'll find their name soon backtrack their statement and say, well, not everything that he did was, you know what I mean? Uh, so you got to be careful because his team, he's got a, a team at work too, yeah. behind the scenes, trying to find every single thing they can find on you. This is embarrassing for her. Yeah. The way she was talking at the Golden Globes, like we are putting every man on notice and opening all of them in the crowd. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this shit about to be real. <laughs> they don't want that smoke. Yeah. And here it is. Uh, you're in bed with this, uh, you know, yeah. kid who was 17, and I heard he wasn't 17 when it started. Or she waited until he turned uh, seven. I, you know, that's something. That's still some predatory. Yeah. It's still predatory. Yeah. I mean, you know, fellas always had that. Why didn't shit happen to me? But you know, we 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 get it. It's still yeah. uh, a predatory act on her part, and I think it's a ploy in other ways to um, begin the discredit process of me too. Because all you need to do is start questioning things. Yeah, yeah. You know how people's minds, well, well, I don't really know now. Well, maybe, maybe. And that's all you really need. And it creates just enough doubt. Uh, because in the, in the uh, form of public opinion, right? Right. Just like if you're on, on uh, you, it's a 12-person jury. Yeah, and I just got to create a, a little bit of doubt right, to we, get my time. It's, it's a performance. Like, I just have to. It's a performance. 
you know, cast a little bit of doubt over anything, and then you can't convict. You you can't convict. If the glove don't fit, you must acquit. So, and side note, we've been watching the Trayvon Martin. Dude. And we missed part five, but, you know, we can watch it. That that shit is disgusting. Oh, man. Just, just the whole, it's a debacle. Yeah, man. And every time I see the father and he's got his head down, like, ah, oh, shit. And it just goes to show you how this, this process works. And he was doomed. That case was doomed yeah. from, from, the, from the onset. Side note, did you see Bobby Brown special? I, I missed it. I missed it. I missed it too. So we're not on point. We can't yeah. gossip about it. But I heard he did some things to Janet. Yo, listen. That means yo, Bobby Brown was an icon, B. Yeah, yeah. He a legend. He had Whitney and Janet. Yeah, he's a legend. Come on, man. He's an icon. Well, a lot of things going on in Hollywood that you don't get these stories. But, yo, because you know what's crazy? Did I you? heard Mike Tyson body count in Hollywood is crazy, too. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just I'm just saying. No, but you know, didn't wasn't there rumored out that um, <clears throat> Michael Jackson was dating Whitney Houston at one point? Michael was was gangster man. He dating a lot of people man. See y'all 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 got the story yeah, see, twisted. That's crazy. Mike Virgo man. Virgo nigga, shit. Uh, you can think we yeah. dancing and singing all you want. He married uh, this nigga's daughter. Yeah. To 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 get that motherfucking catalog yeah. right. So Mike's body count. Yo, didn't he buy? He bought Eminem's catalog. He bought Eminem, dissed him on a track, and he bought his. Catalog. And he bought his fucking catalog. That's gangster yeah. shit. That's gangster shit. So he bought the Beatles catalog after having a conversation with Paul with, McCartney. With Paul McCartney about buying catalogs. And he said, oh. "Oh, oh, right." Yeah. He said, hey, 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 Bubbles. How much? Yeah, is that? They keep saying I'm fucking with little boys. I'm not. Uh, and also, Joe Jackson went out. Did we speak about that? Last month, I believe his father finally. Oh yeah, 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 we Joe, did, yeah. Joe. Yeah, we did so far. I hope he ain't up there fucking with Mike. God damn it! Mm. Yeah, here you are. No, his father is in purgatory. Yeah. Purgatory. Anyway, I'm just having a good time. <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Urban X Nation. Back the subscribers. The subscribers. The people that read the blog Urban X at NYC. The people that follow the readers, us. The the audio team. Facts, facts. Right. Uh, we got we got a team. You know what I mean. Yeah. And uh, so. Uh, we're thankful. We'll try to get back to this live thing because uh, I don't know. We have it, and then we we get so some un, some technical things go down. And I, you know, it's crazy. It's just frustrating when it's like I, I'm cool with human error. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? I understand human error. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? One time, T, you know, she messed up. One time, yeah, yeah. we 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 had stuff. I'm cool with that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. when it's Tech, like technology, like we pay for this. Yeah, we pay for you to do one job, and we're kind of like uh, we're not uh, we're not weirdos enough to really figure it out. It's really not a lot of pieces, and we unplugging and plugging yeah. back in and cutting this over here. Is, yeah. and, what if we do that? What if we switch the wires, even though they look like they can't be switched? <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> Fuck it, try that shit. We switching wires yeah. that shouldn't be switched. We lowering the temperature in the room. Bring the temperature down. <laughs> You know I can't concentrate and fuck temperatures up. We doing all kind of weird shit, man, yeah. and it ain't working. So you know we we gonna record this. We gonna yeah. put this out there for you. Yeah, and uh, you know we gonna get it together because that's what we do here. That's a fact. You know, because somebody gonna get Alejandro. Okay. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. So Urban X in the story. Urban excellent story. You know what I'm Let's so, get to something. For the people that don't know, we highlight. We, we aim to highlight. You know, a few people every week for urban excellence. If you know, you're striving to do better in your life, whatever Absolutely. that means to you. Absolutely. Whatever that means to you. Absolutely. Your daughter has lemonade stand. We want to know about it. Tell us and send us some of the lemonade. But no, don't send us some of the lemonade. Yeah, yeah. So we may have some people out there that don't like us. So make a special lemonade yeah. for Black Town, huh? Uh, <laughs> How you like that lemonade, Black Thanks. Dot? Huh? How you like that? So, um, you know, if you start a business, let us know. You start yes. a school, let us know. So, I got an email. Okay. Okay. From this woman. Her name is uh, Latasha Boyd. Latasha Boyd. Let's clap her up immediately. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, she's... Uh, she sent this story. This is from her brother, uh, Devontae Bradley. He started college at Minnesota State University on your birthday, actually, on uh, August 27th. August 27th, Devontae Bradley, Bradley is his yes. name. And he went to where? Uh, Minnesota State University. Minnesota State University. <laughs> big. Yeah. That's big. So that's, that's her little brother. She said her and her husband and her two children, they drove 
all the way, you know, to um, to the school, dropped mm-hmm. him off and things like that. Uh, she's the oldest, and he's the second child to go to college out of her family. She was the first. She was the first. She was the first, and he's the second. That yes. yeah, damn it. Grab it up. And uh, her, she herself was a first generation college student uh, from uh, DePaul University in 07. So mm-hmm. him, so she, what's dope was uh, that she started a new, you know, wave in her family. You know what I'm Absolutely. saying? Now that's going to be expected. She's had her sons there watching them. So they're going to see it. They're going to want to go to college. And all of that's important. It right. takes one person. See, you have to be responsible for your family's legacy. Right. You know, when we talk about what well, we ain't making strides, everybody in their family just has to do a little bit better. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I grew up on welfare. I didn't want my kids to grow up on welfare, so I just wanted to do a little bit better. My father was around, but he was in and out of prison. That's a whole other story. I wanted to be there. I just want to set a bar, right? And right. everybody in their family, the first one to go to college is that trailblazer. Now, she took her and her kids. They went up. The young shorties is like, ooh, right. okay. I see what's going on here. And now they want to, and it becomes expected because my man, what's his name again? Uh, uh, Devontae Bradley. Devontae is now the new generation uh, you know what I'm saying? Setting that tone. Right. And we want to tell you, we love you. Good luck up there. Oh, also, real quick. Uh, he was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes two years ago. He's still trucking. He's still doing oh, his thing. Oh, okay. So you studies. know how I feel about that. We don't believe in disabilities here. Right. You know what I'm saying? Don't see yourself as no victim. Own that. Claim that. Make the adjustments that you have to make. And now you have young people watching you up there, Devontae. Right. And I will say this, Devontae, okay? If you ain't never been around girls, oh. boy, oh boy, you gonna see some girls, but stay focused on the mission at hand. Facts. All right? Now, if you side note right. again, Minnesota has a, you know, a lot of white girls up there. That's cool, too. Just make sure they do your laundry, because they will do your laundry <laughs> for you, okay? So make sure yeah, it's between us. I don't, I don't want your aunt to get mad at that, yeah. but... Yeah, so we want to shout that out one more time. Urban Excellence. Thanks. Uh, shout out to everybody else that started college. Shout out to everybody whose kids started their first day of schools this week. Yeah, and that's... shout out you and Marcus. Oh, yeah. They took Odyssey up to visit Albany University because yeah. next year she's going to college. Yeah. And I thought that was big that her, her two oldest brothers who are college graduates yeah. took her up there. And that was great. That was yeah. great. We're going to clap that up. We're yeah. getting around. Of, this is yeah. church now. Yeah, yeah. yeah she, she loved it. However, she did say. Oh, <laughs> and I have to add this in there too. Yeah, she has problems. I want to. This is a disclaimer. My sister Odyssey has problems. Yeah, like, yeah, there's something yeah, she's, wrong with that girl. If you think I'm off, <laughs> she is way off the charts with it. But she did say, as she was walking with her two brothers, who were older and had mm. beards, that she began to wonder, did people think that you two were her gay fathers and that you had adopted her or she something? She wanted to start a whole, like, yo, just say you adopted me from Kenya. I was just yeah, like, yeah, yeah. She was like, maybe I can get here for free. Because <laughs> as she looked around, people were there with their mother and father and this and that. And here she come with these two dudes and my older son's beard is full. He got the, he got the freeway shit. You know what I'm saying? And they probably was going, wait a minute. Clap that up. Clap that up for gayness. <laughs> you know. Clap that up for you and Yo. you know. You and your brother supporting the gay movement and yeah. didn't even know it. That, has, that, that's progressive. That's she progressive. She has problems, V. Like yeah, I don't know yeah. what's wrong with that girl. Yeah, yeah. Facts. We're gonna get on the show yeah. soon because uh <laughs> yeah, yeah, she uh she, oh, she she just started her senior year in high school too. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. No, we're not we, we clapped up a lot. All right, we did a lot of claps. So yeah. but she started her senior year. She's doing a lot of research on her own. She's focused. She really yeah. liked the school. And you know, it's gonna be tough for me as a dad to watch my daughter finally grow up and make a move, but she's gonna get all the support in the world Thanks. that she needs, and it's her time to grow. So, uh, you know, but for me, I want to make sure when we move her in, Mm -hmm. it'll be 50 dudes with us. All my my brothers, everybody is coming to move her in. So, uh, because we're going to be setting the tone. Exactly. Like, huh, (laughs) huh, shit, y'all, huh. Yeah, it only took us 10 minutes to get here because we live down the block. Because we live down the block, son. Yeah. Don't get it twisted. Feel me? 
I'm gonna learn some of the addresses yeah. that close by. <laughs> Sign up from Crent, 34 from yeah. Crench. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right there. They just be like, oh, don't, don't, don't fuck with us. Yeah. You know I mean? So we're gonna throw that out there. But we wanna, once again, uh, Urban Excellence, if you have some stories, email them. Uh, email them to email us. Email us. UrbanX.nyc at gmail.com uh, or um, Instagram, Twitter at UrbanX underscore NYC. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, all of that kind of stuff. And, you know, we just wanna support and we wanna show love. And, you know, for, for those that are doing things, and that's a big thing. Thanks. So it is what it is. Uh, also, shout out to Seven on his birthday. Oh, yeah. This is my nephew Seven's birthday. Yeah. Clap that up. He was born on the 6th. Yeah. He was born on the 6th, but he was born But if I want to get technical, September, Sept is the number 7, even though we call it the number 9, just like October is the 10th month, but technically, Oct is eight, so dude, he he he's in the pocket. He's growing up. He's got to be nineteen. He's nineteen. Yeah, 19. yeah. And uh, yeah, yeah. So shout out to my nephew Seven, uh, Malik out here doing major major things. Facts. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. Now, just just now, right? So we're recording this on Thursday, right? Okay. Just now, the game is on in the background. Uh huh. Right? Yeah. They just played the Colin Kaepernick commercial. Commercial. After, like, this is during the first NFL game of the season. Ooh. That was boss life. That's gangsta. Yeah. Rah. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so if you don't know, um, uh, Nike uh, picked uh, Colin Kaepernick as the face of their 30th Just Do It campaign. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, people are up in arms. Up in arms. People were burning their Nike products and things like that. Niggas, Stuff that they already paid for. Niggas ain't burning Jordans, but go ahead. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But uh, I thought it was dope. You know, so it's it's a lot of layers that go into this, but I thought initially, that's dope. You know what I'm saying? He doesn't have to be a broke activist. You know what I'm saying? Even though apparently some of his money is going back to uh, one of his his charity. Mm-hmm. Um, um, my right, one he, of the writers on Urban X wrote about it on Urban X at NYC. So he's he's very out. charitable. He yeah. is very charitable. I will say that. So yeah, again, I thought it was dope. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he he doesn't have to be broke. However, I don't. I just caution people to you know tuck their woke cards in just because they got on a pair of Nike sneakers. I just right, caution right. that. But I think it's <laughs> I think it's interesting. Uh, yeah, that's it. Let me know when it's my turn. Go ahead. All right. This is Black Dot, and the words expressed here is solely mine. Good. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to start with that. All right? I don't give a fuck about Nike. I don't give a fuck about none of that shit. But for the sake of conversation, let's have one. Mm-hmm. All right? Um, I have never equated revolution and corporation in the same sentence. Right. Okay. Right? So now we have a quagmire on our hands. Yeah. Right? But I will say this, you better be corked up today if you're a revolutionary. Whatever you're doing, corporations run this bitch. Yeah. All right, let me go back all the way back to like public enemy. Okay. Right? And they had the fight the power movement, the most the most powerful hip hop group of all time, as far as I'm concerned. But when I went to their concerts, it was a bunch of white people there. Mm. You know what I mean? And it kind of they were softening the blow of the message. I understood the marketing behind it because you had Beastie Boys and Run DMC. And to the far right, you had Public Enemy. To the far left, you had Beastie Boys. And Run DMC was the middle ground. All right? So, but who was sponsoring the message? Def Jam. Def Jam is a corporation. So, understanding that corporations have always played some kind of role in how we do things. They have found the unique way to market your life every part of your life now is owned by some corporation or some corporation will benefit from it Mm -hmm. you know what i mean muhammad ali was totally broke no corporations were sponsoring him he was asked out on his own fighting the cause against america not a football team so please stop associating colin kaepernick with muhammad ali let's start there Give Muhammad Ali his due diligence because when we talk about sacrifice, which is in the name of this ad, right. it's hard for me to think you can sacrifice when you're sitting on 40 fucking million dollars or whatever it is that you're sitting on. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, say I'm sacrificing the bitch. We got that money in the bank. We, okay, as long as we got 30 million in the bank, and I don't give a fuck what they do to us. We're going to be good. You see what I'm saying? Right. So, granted, Colin Kaepernick is giving 
monies to uh, uh, to mm -hmm. op corporations, I mean organizations and, yeah. and charities. So I don't want to take that away. But if if my safety net is I'm st I still got twenty million somewhere, it's easy for me to perpetuate things that are not what they you know really right. are. Muhammad Ali didn't have that comfort mm -hmm. zone. You know what I mean? Now with that being said, Nike has a history of doing this. When Kobe, uh, you know, was, was with the, the, when Kobe butt fucked the girl from okay. the trailer park. Okay, let's just keep it raw, okay. right? She was ugly too. God, mm. geez, Kobe. God damn it. Anyway, mm. right? Nike didn't leave. Other companies left. Right. Nike was like, nah, we good. We can hold on to that. You know what I'm saying? I, Nike, they, they see the big picture. They see the big picture. Yeah. Right? When uh, Tiger Woods went through his shit. Yeah. All of them other companies left. Wheaties, all that. Wheaties and all that shit. Nike was good. When Charles Barkley, because Kyle and Hurd even broke that down, Charles Barkley, when he did that, I am not a role model, which was a very polarizing Nike commercial at the time. Right. I am not a role model. Parents should be role models. People were up in arms. Nike held that. You know what I'm saying? So we have to understand Nike sees the big picture of this. So now, and Nike's into mythological characters. Tiger Woods. Serena. Serena with the cat suit yeah. shit. Right? Mm -hmm. Kobe Bryant, the black mamba. Right? LeBron James, LeBron James, and now Colin Kaepernick, who wears number seven, and we know that seven is for G-O-D, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's what also made me weird it out when I'm seeing God take a kneel, mm -hmm. so that all that stuff kind of just weirds me out a little bit. But with that being said, you know what I mean? Um, at the end of the day, Nike's still going to make their money irregardless. For those white people white people who are protesting this by burning your little fucking corny nikes that you bought for nine dollars and shit but y'all didn't do that when your man uh with the sandwich company uh subway jared jared was butt fucking little boys y'all kept buying sandwiches right. right all they had to do was just take his commercials down just take his fucking commercials there yeah. right chick-fil-a which i haven't had yet i had like once that Chick Fil A shit is real. It's, 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 it's amazing. It's amazing, yeah. right? Oh, buttery biscuits and shit and syrup on them. Right. So it. now, <laughs> but at the moment, I am a I am a vegan. Say facts. Four months. Facts. Yeah, you know, I do that from time to time. But if motherfucker come in here with one of Chick Fil A sandwiches, <laughs> the deal is over. Especially if that shit is hot. Mm. So now, with that being said, Chick Fil A has got an anti-gay stance. They don't believe they they oh, not yeah, they, with they, all they, that they really, gay shit. They're really uh religious. They're very religious. They yeah. don't open on Sundays. They ain't with that gay shit. They follow the Bible as it was currently written. Your man Papa John's. All right. Right? Said the N-word. Niggas better stop fucking up yeah. kneeling and fucking up the money. He out. I don't see nobody stop eating the yeah. pizza. So you're looking hypocritical. Yeah. And the fact that you would burn sneakers, How but you won't take on the causes. That caused us to take a kneel or in the first place. If you have such a thing with the veterans and give your sneakers to one of them. Absolutely. Give veterans get treated terrible in this country. <clears throat> and that's that's like let's skim over the fact that these sneakers are made for twenty cents. Right. Two cents. I was going there too. At that. Right. So you're protesting against some shit. But you're not protesting the making of these sneakers, where these country 80% women are the ones who are making these sneakers. And I told you before, you can't even commit suicide now. You used to jump out the window, fuck it. Now they got the net. Boop, your ass fall in the net. Ming Lee, you got 20 minutes. Bring your ass back up right. here and stop making these fucking sneakers, right? right? So we know there's hypocrisy on so many levels of what it is we're talking so about. You have to pick and choose. And we have become, as we said a couple of weeks ago, yeah. selective boycotters, yeah. selective choosing. And, and, and it's the whole system. We Listen, I'm going to say it again. If you ain't corked up, because it's now it's not Kaepernick against the NFL. It's, it's Nike, Nike against the NFL. NFL. But and Nike um supplies the nfl and nike supplies the nfl it ain't joe buttons against eminem it's revolt against 
Interscope. Mm. See, this is all corporations now, right. and, and there's a lot to lose. And if your team ain't corped up, yeah. even in your revolutionary stance now, and I know that's going to be crazy for me to say, but look, the ones, the movers and shakers are backed by some <clears> corporation. <throat> And if you are not in this day and time, then you're operating on an old paradigm. You have to be corked up to really make some kind of input. And your, your corporation has got to believe in your movement. See, before we used to be like, yo, they, they you know, I went to protests, the government and hey. the niggas was giving our jobs. And fuck it, I filled out an application. Now I'm backing you up. Calm down, hey. calm down. <clears throat> you know what I mean? Hey, hey. And it, it, it's like they have, Nike in particular, all of these companies, Right, Yeezy with yeah, Adidas, uh, uh, Jay Z is with Puma. So you see, they have recognized who we are. So we got to be very careful because now they control the tempo, they control the stream of energy that used to be just raw chaotic energy. Yeah. So we got to be careful with this Nike shit. And unless you got some Nike stock. Which I don't. You know what's crazy? People were using that as a case because the Nike stock had dropped two point five percent. Yeah, but that day. did but Nike look worried? Adidas dropped that day to two point five percent. Puma dropped that day three percent. Uh, I think uh, they it, all dropped. They all dropped that day. They all dropped that day. You know, you know what, what I mean? So, so but look, look, look at everything Nike has been through, which stands for the Winged God or something. You know, the right. Nike symbol and shit. Um, Nike's been through a lot, and they, they stay the course. Right. They understand paradigm shifts. So this whole woke community as Red Pill, or I'm sorry, Blue Pill, said is a $44 billion industry yeah. now. And, and Sephora, I don't know if you saw that. They're selling like vo- uh, they witchcraft? They're selling a, 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 a witchcraft kit, kit yeah. with a, 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 a sage and yeah. like some stones and some... So you know now, once they begin to commercialize your magic... It begins to temper your magic, and you think this shit is a joke. So we got to be careful and understand what's going on. But Nike is about iconic figures, and everything that those iconic figures go through, Nike weathers the storm, yeah. and Nike continues to win. So I wear sketches, so I, I'm just saying, <laughs> for the Nike people out there, don't go out and start buying a whole bunch of Nike unless you got some stock. So this whole cabinet... Uh, 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 Situation yeah. and uh, you know I, I, he he's a brother. I mean, his afro ain't got that. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's it's looking. His it's, shit got a little wavy nah, to it. Like nah, I don't know if he's you know full black power. Nah, I, I don't know if he got the Jesse Jackson, Angela Davis nah, his, shit. His afro is looking a little. Because I was looking at his afro. See, that's the true test. If yeah. your shit stand up like niggas. Kill Whitey, you know. Then you go, oh, this nigga's like a throwback from the his Afro is official. His shit is a little nah. His frozen dude, his shit, shit, nigga. When the wind blow, that shit was kind of <laughs> like he he blew that shit out with a with a uh, straightening comb, like a yeah. a blow dryer yeah. or some. Shit. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, but I'm not gonna get into all that if he's black shit because yeah. then the list to get crazy of who we support that is black yeah. and not black. So. I want to support his movement for what he's doing. I, I'm not with the taking the knee shit. I already yeah. told you, but all the money that he's given, if he is truly, uh, uh, you know, aligning himself to give up some money, then that's great. But do not associate him yeah. with the sacrifice, because sacrifice means to me, um, I'm willing to give it, give it all up. He gave, you know up, his, I mean? he gave up his livelihood. Dude, he lost his starting job before he started this shit. Huh? Did he lose his stuff? Yeah, right yeah, he did. He did. He lost because he was playing like shit. Dude, go back and watch it, okay. right? Then when he didn't renew his contract, and then he went into some other shit. Let's just call it for what it is. And he had a lot of free time as a backup quarterback. You know, you know what? <laughs> I'm not fucking playing. You know what? I'm, I'm just going to take a knee. Why is this nigga over here taking a knee? And side note, don't do that shit at Burger King if you work in there and you want to make a you know statement. Don't do it. They will fire your ass. All right? So... Let's just uh, keep that moving. But shout out to him and whatever his movement is going to bring. But black people, let's not be so gullible and just be following shit like you living vicariously through this man. Remember, Make action on your own, please. Remember when uh, you said uh, Laval Ball had us in the second place? Huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so the uh, um, Zach, Zachary Ramey, he's the one that wrote the article on Urban X and NYC. He says... Colin Kaepernick has us, like, this whole situation has us in the sunken Dude, place. because what we're doing is we're sitting back at home living our lives, right. 
and we're just hitting our fingers trying to give him energy to go out and do that shit. Do you do that shit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? While I'm home chilling and yeah. shit. So we, you know, we, this whole corporation uh, uh, make the activists, I told you, they don't need to control millions. One who has control yeah. over millions and you feel good about yourself because this man is out here taking a beating and taking a knee and you've got off your ass and done exactly nothing. And guess who wins? The Matrix, the simulation has got this shit figured out. Hey. Let these niggas follow this nigga and let him stand for something because we need that shit. But you never physically get up to just go into your community and do small things. Hey. You know, I'm always talking about the small things we can do to move us along. And yeah, he too has us in a, he ain't got me in a sunken place, but he got a lot yeah. of people in, in, in a sunken place. And I think I did his name too. I did his name, Colin uh, Kaepernick, and the number came up to 146. And some of the words that were connected to 146 were Leonardo da Vinci, mm. da Vinci code. You know what I'm saying? Maybe something's going on there. Bloody sacrifice mm. financial crisis and meet in the middle so maybe he will be the arbitration between the nfl and you know mm. i don't know those are just some of the keywords the, that came out full sentences with 146 as a vibration for him his, just want um, to throw that out there the the nfl like the col the collusion the like nfl collusion case that's gonna go to trial now exactly so so but now he got a machine behind yeah. him. see what i'm saying so see how that works yeah. and nike never left him yeah that that's yeah. the thing about it it was not like nike dropped him so this is what i mean by uh, uh today's activism has a little asterisk near it because it's like yeah i still got 35 million in the can yeah. so i can come out and say fuck all y'all you know what i mean so it, it's important that we, we we take note of that you are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. So we got an ad here. It's not really an ad. This is, I'm shouting out an event that's happening. Okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, so my boy Josh and um, his lady, uh, Shana, they're having an event on September 9th. It's called See You Tomorrow. See You Tomorrow. Okay. Right, and uh, it's, you know, like the text, you know, See You Tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And the title is based off when loved ones pass, you know, typical messages uh, to people, to, to their friends or family members that are going through a rough patches. And they say, oh, don't worry about it. See you tomorrow. Um, right? Mm. So it's a suicide um, suicide prevention and awareness event. Okay. Right? So the idea around this event is um, it's an art exhibition. And all the artists were asked, if you, were, if you could paint something that would save someone's life or save someone from suicide or depression, what would you paint? And mm. that's what all the artists are doing. Oh, that's that's. Let me clap that up. That's yeah. that's great. <laughs> we in the black community don't deal enough with, with mental health, with mental health yeah. and suicide, and you know, and that see you tomorrow is very critical yeah. because I need to see you today. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So don't exactly. think because I'm strong, I'm acting strong, that I don't have issues that need to be dealt with. <clears throat> so it's important that. We always communicate with each other and find right. out how each other is doing, you right. know, especially, you, you know, your core people, man, because we wear this outer shell that says that we're strong and we got it. And a yeah, lot of times you never, we, you never know if somebody's really going. You through. never you really never know, know until you keep the communication. That's why in this household and, you know, we give it up here. We sit down and we go across the table and we really try to delve in to find how out each each individual yeah. is doing and, and, and how we can help because, uh, you know, it, it's just critical. You know what I mean? So, so all, <clears throat> all donations and proceeds will be donated to the American Foundation of Suicide Prevention. Okay. Who okay. are also a part of the event. Oh, let's clap that yeah. up. Yeah. 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 So again, uh, this event will be at uh, 2407 uh, 3rd Avenue in the Bronx on September 9th, uh, 5 to 10 p.m. You'll be in the building. I'll be in the sure. building. I'll okay. definitely be in the building. Urban X will be there. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to get some interviews, see what's happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, I'll sh the footage will be up next week. Okay, sometime. perfect. You know perfect. what I'm saying? So I'll definitely be up there. And I definitely wanted to shout out uh, you know, this event. I thought it was really, really it, dope. It's big. It hits, it hits home. And, you know, I drove a bus for the city and, you know, for 15 plus years. And I didn't understand that all mental health, you really couldn't notice. You know, it's yeah. not an outwardly thing. And people get on the bus 
and they lose it. You know what I'm saying? You see these triggers and it really made me pay a little bit more attention to the mental health of our people because right. people will snap and you don't know what state they're in. So uh, big up to, uh, what's her name and his name? Uh, that's Josh. Josh. My man, Josh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout yeah. out Josh. That's Jiggy, my boy. Yep. Boy, Jiggy Josh. Jiggy and Josh. Shana. And Shayna. Shayna, that's his lady? Yes, his lady. All right, big, this, big up to Shayna as well. Uh, this uh, this issue is really important to her. Okay, okay. And, uh, you know, Josh helped out. Okay, with the, with the event, as he should. Like, as he as should, he should. You know what I'm saying? So, <clears throat> I thought this was really dope. Again, it's called See You Tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And when they were promoting it, it was bugging me out because I kept seeing See You Tomorrow. I'm like, wait, it's... Yeah, it's you kept saying, is it tomorrow? Yeah, it, it kept bugging yeah, me out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's in the Bronx, uh, 2407 Third Avenue in the Bronx, September 9th. September 9th, if you are in the area, come on through. Come on through. All donations, again. All donations. And proceeds go to the American Foundation for Su- of Suicide. Yes, suicide I think that's a noble cause. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. Oh, let's... Okay, so uh, LeBron, let's talk about his show. The Shop. The Shop, yes. yes. First of all, LeBron is really... We, we talked about <laughs> he's flexing, but he's really... Flexing now, yeah, and that worries me. That worries it's me. Scared. It's scared. It's a little like ah. it worries me for him because, yeah. um, you know, once you start delving into politics, things start going awry. But I will yeah. say this now, and I'm gonna make this claim politics, social events, sports, music is all one now. Mm-hmm. It's not, it used to be separate things, and you shut up and dribble. That is no longer the case because athletes are crossing over. Politics uh, at sporting events, so it is a gumbo now, right. which may give him a pass because, uh, you know, when, when when Dr. King went political, they popped his top, mm. you know, other issues. So you got to be very careful. And now he's thumbing his, he, he, I keep saying thumbing his fingers, his middle yeah. finger. Uh, you know, now he's middle fingering, but I love it because at least he's being truthful and honest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So back to the Colin Kaepernick. When we talk about sacrifice, sacrifice, because I know I'm going to sound hypocritical now, it's not always based on not having the money. That's the old traditional way. But now we have those who got their bread and still saying fuck it. And that's a new form yeah. of revolutionary uh, acts that we're going to pay attention yeah. to. Because most of the time, when, when dudes get their money, they're yeah. like, yo, dude, those are your issues. Yeah. Those are no longer, you get yours how you, how you can get yours. But now you have Colin Kaepernick yeah. and LeBron, who's probably looking at a Billy, yeah. right, in, in, in the mirror, is saying, but I, I, I've been put here for more than just sports. Sports is a means of how I get my money and my passion for what I love to do, but I am a being on this planet with a greater purpose. So now we're seeing yeah. uh, him flex a little bit more, and his shoulder shop is an example of yeah. that. When he said, yo, I ain't fucking with white people. And somebody just put that, took that yeah. little clip. I said, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> he did not just say that. But he said it in context that the first time he came in contact with white people, he said, I'm not fucking with white people. Right. Because it's a cultural uh, difference. And I don't understand. Yeah. It's a disconnect. Yeah. And when you grew up in the hood, white people were the enemy. Right. You know what I mean? So now we see him taking more of a stand uh, the show is is really barbershop friendly. What yeah. goes on? I wrote a chapter in my book, Urban Culture Decoded Plug, about the barbershop right, 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 right. and its importance in our community and things of that nature. And then we had the, the Ice Cube did the barbershop. So right. we understand culturally what the barbershop means for our community. And for him to do a show and he's sitting around, he had Stewart, uh, what's his name? John Stewart. John Stewart, the white boy. And I get what he was trying to do, John bring him a, in. John Stewart is a beast. He's a beast, John but I don't beast. see no white boys. And he even made a statement. Yeah. He said, yo, you ever been in a black barber shop? And he said, only when I'm collecting the rent. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? And I thought that was funny, but I thought it gave a great inside look yeah. of rich people. Mm-hmm. He had uh, Draymond. Draymond it, Snoop? Odell Beckham, oh, yeah. Snoop, Candace Parker, Vince Staples, yeah. Candace Parker, and uh, somebody else there. Yeah. Uh, you know, I think uh, one of his uh, managers. Oh uh, no, Maverick was there. Maverick was there. Yeah. And these are rich people, yeah. but the issues they're discussing were not rich issues. Yeah. So it, it goes to show that this new generation is not just about let me get my money. So you have to applaud. Yeah. That. 
You have to applaud it. Even if you think, uh, uh, you know, you can give me a shitload of things he's doing wrong and this and that. We understand where he stands in status wise yeah. in terms of the boule and all of that. But don't say he ain't rolling up his sleeve and addressing issues. And that's how he's going to crush Mike. See, y'all think he's going to crush Mike on the court. He only need to get one or two more rings with mm -hmm. the Lakers and he, he will crush Mike as far as I'm concerned. But he going to crush Mike iconically. You know what I'm saying? He's going to crush Mike politically, socially, economically. He's going to put that work in on Mike to say, yeah, I didn't forget where I came from. And that's got to be worth something, yeah. just in my humble opinion. Oh, so he um he was, he has a new series or a, a document a, uh, a documentary documentary I don't know why I can't say that word just now it was weird but um about college athletes not getting paid uh. and now that's you you messing with billions then. now you messing with, yeah yeah that's what I'm saying like I'm nervous boy yeah, like and, and, and he hasn't and he also hasn't performed the ritual yet you know Kobe had to go through a ritual with the white girl Magic went through a ritual. Now you up in the in city of Los Angeles, they, you, a price is, you know, that's what worries me, that now he's out there. See, in Cleveland, he's in his own little town, even though we know he's still the chosen one and all that, King James. You usually got to offer something when, you, when you're out there in the city of Los Angeles. So uh, him uh, uh, now addressing somebody else's money yeah, right. in that capacity, right, right. we, we want to uh, we want to put a halo around uh, our brother LeBron and hope that uh, he's making his moves wisely. Oh, this is um, random. He gave, uh, he put a new locker room and he gave a lot of, you know, uh, athletic gear to Christ the King High School in Queens. Oh, let's clap that up. Yeah. Christ the King. That's, that's a formidable school, too. Yeah. 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 And he's got a new sneaker out. Yeah. Sure. He's also got a new sneaker out that was uh, designed by three black women. Yep. Clap that up. Yeah. So he gave a speech recently uh, about his mother mm. and how great his mother is and how the black woman, I'm, I'm verbatim, but the black woman, I'm, I'm, uh, what do you call that? I'm not quoting him, I'm paraphrasing, yeah. but it, 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 it spoke about uh, uh, the power of the woman and why he felt the black woman was so important, including his mother. See, y'all get caught into the earthly realm things that his mother may have went through from 16 years old or this and that. He wouldn't be here on the planet. Right. And I know the importance of a black woman and what they go through. So absolutely, I'm going to clap that up for black women. Yeah. You know Man. what I mean? So... Let's keep on. Wait, 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 you wait, 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 hold on. First of all, somebody reach out to Diddy and say Mount St. Michael Academy in the Bronx. No, no, okay. Need some stuff. That's the school you went to, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. Diddy went there too. Diddy went there. Yeah. And Diddy offered to, to, to uh, yeah, I don't know, the, I don't know the particulars around he that, He offered to, I don't know the particulars to around give them that, some brother. money for a football field. I don't know the particulars around and, that, brother. And they told him, we ain't gonna have no niggas name on our field. They didn't say, no, you fake news. They said that. They said, we don't know if I they talked said. to Diddy myself, they said. Yeah. But you know what I mean. He did offer money to that school. I believe so. And I think he wanted a building named after himself, which is what I would want. Right, right, right. But it's a Catholic school, and you know how they get down. You know Yo, what I mean? random. Okay, random. this is... This Let's is, get it. Um, this is just Let's off. get it. Yeah, hold on. <clears throat> Hot off the press, real quick. Hold Hot on. off the press. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. So, uh... The New York Attorney, the New York Attorney General, subpoenas all New York Roman Catholic dioceses as a part of a sex abuse probe. Whoa! All of them? All of them. Ouch! Yeah. Yeah, real. Life is like, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's getting real. But white people still go to church? Yeah, white people still send their kids off. Uh, so, the, you know, the priest and their son can have private sessions and all of that old kind of stuff. I'm going to say it for the last time. This is their culture. Oh, real you know quick, I mean? real quick, real quick. For the people that we talk about this stuff and then go, oh, but you sent your kid to a Catholic school. If you're familiar with the educational system, the New York educational system, especially in the Bronx, the high schools, uh, graduation rates, violence and things about things like that. And you compare it to a Catholic school. My Catholic, my school had a graduation percent of 100%. 100%. 100%. Yeah. 
I also wanted to play football. I was one of the top football teams Absolutely. In, the, in the city. And I, I also did my thing there, too. Absolutely. And everybody I know that graduated is doing something with their lives. Absolutely. See, if you, and this goes back to what I always say, the parents are the first teachers of the child. I know so who I am. Right. once I teach him who he is, we only using the school as a vehicle to get to the next level. I said 100% graduate. I said, nigga, you got to be dumb. Not to make it out of here, right? So we wasn't we didn't send them there for their Catholic beliefs and all that. He was probably falling asleep in yo, the damn yo, class. I used to get kicked out of class, religion class, all the time for arguing you. with the arguing with the teacher. So it's it's a political move on my part. It's business. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like when my kids go to college and I know you can go to college and fuck off and have a great time and don't come back and learn shit and then be a DJ after me and my wife done spent 80 grand and shit. We understand this, but I, I feel the benefits of growing up on your own, experiencing what life will be like once you do get into the working right. field. That's why I'm not really big on the HBCs and sending my kid to a super black school because the world is not made up of a bunch of super black people. Don't get me wrong. As long as you know who you are, you can navigate through this matrix. And that was me and my wife's game plan and my ex-wife, his mom's. You know what I'm saying? Our game plan going in was look at the public school, look at the gangs, look at all that shit that our sons. In the school, I would have had to go oh, to. Fam. Oh, so. Fam. <laughs> sometimes you got to put that money up and yeah. look at the big picture to get your men through. But as long as they know who they are at home, wherever I send them in the world, it's just shit that they're going to have to deal with. And that was the game plan then. And that's the game plan now. Right. As Odyssey goes, Dad, I know, I know mm. who the black woman is. You will know. Yeah. And you will know your position in this right. world no matter where you go. So with that being said, back to the buttfuckers. Um, that is their culture. <laughs> um, that's how they get down. So I really don't know how they're going to rectify that. Yeah. They're going to throw a few of them under the, you know what I'm saying, under mm -hmm. the bus. But this is... That's like telling a, a, a lizard not to eat flies. You, you, the flies, this is what we do. And it's a big issue. And parents, just talk to your, your kids. You know, stay closer to your children. Um, you know what I'm saying? And so that's all I really want to say. I don't want to beat you in the head. I don't went through what the priests do and why they do it. And the statues and all that old kind of stuff. And, you know. And there's levels to that too. But, yeah. you know. Can I? Yeah. You are tuned into the sounds of Urban X. You want to talk about this Nikki Travis Scott stuff? Uh, no, not she, really. She, she was, really, dude, this is real quick. She was just on Ellen, and she said that she wanted to punch Travis Scott in the face. Now, if he had said he wanted to punch her in the face, yo, the world would have flipped. Oh right? my god! True, right? The world would have flipped. Oh. And but she said, I wanted to punch him in his fucking face. And like he personally, this is what I mean by you got to be corped up. My corporation was better than yours. You yeah. was trying to sell merch too. Don't get it twisted. Yeah. My team did a better job than your team selling merchandise because I told y'all 10 years ago that the music would be free. And people looked at me like I was coming from space. And I said, they're going to have to give the music away so that they can integrate that into other things. And you got to find other ways and then that led to the 360 deal and where we are now. And her team did a shitty job. Yep. He beat it a second week too. Yeah. Okay, so if it was an aberration week one, the fuck happened in week two? He beat you again. And I'm going to be honest, his album was better. His album was fire. His album was better. That doesn't mean she didn't have a good album. And please don't make this about we going in on the black woman. Yo, please no. stop this shit. Yeah. All right, we're strictly talking music, right? And I give it up when I give it up. If her album was fire, I'm like, yo, her album was fire. Her album was good. She lyrically separated herself from Cardi, as we said, because somebody in the comment section but, you said. Know, this is, I also find that a really lazy argument when they say they're in two different lanes. How? No, they're not in two different How lanes. How are they in two different lanes? They're not. They're in the same lane. And it's just that you've been in that lane so much by yourself. Yes. That you created a void a and while you were sleeping thinking that you were the queen and you didn't have to hit them streets and stay close to what's going on in the streets. You left a huge void and somebody who's anti you yeah. 
Cardi B just whatever, whatever came through and her album just had a little bit more flavor to it. All of her imperfections made her album perfect. You know what I mean? If that makes any kind of sense. So that's it. So, you know, shout out to Travis. Shout out to Travis. See, right now we'll be taking questions from the chat, but there's no chat. There's no chat. Let's get to my Cosby story. Do we have uh, my man up here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, What's it? Uh, Jeffrey Owens. Jeffrey Owens, right? Uh, they did him dirty. They did him greasy. You know he had to quit the job. Then. Yeah, so he no longer yeah. works at Trader Joe's. Somebody, and, and the, the young lady who did it, she, she said, said she regretted it. She yeah. regretted it. She wasn't trying to shame him or yeah. something, but... He was working at Trader Joe's and, uh, you know, the internet, you know, a lot of people, young people in particular were on fire about, oh God, you know what I'm saying? But those of us who are older understand the principles of that. You know what I mean? Yeah. What hard work is me and my wife saw a young lady walking in the McDonald's the other day. We were at the light and she had a uniform on Spanish girl and she was walking into McDonald's with such vigor. Like Calvin, you know what I mean? <laughs> From the Calvin Chappelle got a show. job. Calvin got a job. And yeah. I, I wouldn't, rarely do I see black teenagers embrace working like that. But we don't know what country this young girl came mm-hmm. in. She was early, because me and wife, we looked at the watch. It was like 145. And so we said, she must have to be there by two. She was early. She walked in there with her head up. Like, this is my job. I'm going to embrace it. I'm going to tell you a couple of stories, right? Me and wifey, we wasn't always doing the damn thing, you know. We were struggling early on, as, as people do. And because um, we had always said, uh, one of us are going to stay home while Eli is home because our son is disabled and we don't want nobody taking care of him but us. So we made a lot of sacrifices. Right. And one time we got behind three or four months on the rent. And we looked around and she said, what are you going to do? I had a whole bunch of equipment, drum machines, keyboards, uh, CD burners. I said, I'll be right back. I packed all of that shit up, and I went and came back with three months rent. When she saw that, she said, okay, okay. I know where this is going, so I know what you know who I'm in the trenches with. Three months later, now she's in the predicament. We're in the same predicament, and she got all this jewelry, gold rings and watches and shit her moms gave her, and she said to me, I'll be right back. And she did the same exact thing. So at that point, we kind of knew uh, where we would go and what we would do to feed the family. There was another incident when we ain't had no money, and uh, I said, all right, I'm going out to the barbershop and set up the CD table. I'm going to sell some CDs. And it was the hottest day of the summer, and it must have been the end of the month because nobody purchased shit. It was across the street, right? Yeah, across the street. Yeah, I, remember, I remember that. And wifey looking out the window at me like, damn, only two people bought CDs from me. Tracy Morgan, the actor. Shout out Gary, who used to cut his hair on university, <clears throat> and my cousin Sean. And I could tell my cousin Sean really didn't have it, and I made $10, and that $10 was like $100 that day for what we needed right. to. So when I say shit like, I will shovel elephant shit at the circus to feed the babies, that's what I will do, and I will do that with pride because any man will do that to feed his family. So when he fell off the bandwagon, because he wasn't a major damn Cosby star right, anyway. Right. He looked at his situation and said, I can sulk and go to drugs and feel sorry for myself, or I can pick myself up. And I'll do that shit today. And he be between, like, because he, he worked on Broadway too. So that's, being an actor is not a full time thing. Right, Even so, if you own a big show, right. they can kill you, they can run you off. In between, you, know you got to feed your family. If shit went haywire right here and the mortgage was due, Hey, this is Black Dot. Welcome to Happy Burger. May I take your order, please? Right. Would you like to supersize? You know the routine. Right. And that's the way that shit goes. Real quick. So, um, you know. Real quick. Shout out to him for, uh, you know, holding his head up. Right. At all times. And you young people need to embrace any kind of work you're doing. Let me say this. If you're working at McDonald's, find out what the job is really about. Don't just come in and flip your burgers and leave when it's time for you to leave. Find out when the orders come in. Why the orders? Uh, why do you order this much on right. this day? Because a lot of times your vibration will lead you into a position to be the manager. So take pride in the work that you do. That's all my mother said. Whatever you do, and I know your mother said the same right. thing. Just be the best at it. So with that being said, you know. Real quick, real is. quick, uh, just to feel. 
Um, a former Destiny's Child member, uh, Latavia Robinson, she too had to work at a record shop. At a record shop, and she said people were only coming in to see if it was really her. Absolutely, you know absolutely. So everybody has to go there. This yeah, the, the, who's thing. the girl was with Fifty Cent? Uh, the, the female rapper he had. Uh, I, uh, Olivia. Olivia, she had to go to work. Yeah. So listen, hold your head up out here, people. And uh, with that being said, uh, you know, I think uh, we can let that thing go. Yeah, man. Peace. Peace. Black mass, man. It's oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Bring up my Beanie Siegel piece. Oh, dude. Bring up my Beanie Siegel piece. Bring up my Beanie Siegel. All right. Shout out to Doggy Diamonds. Uh, we got our tickets already for this. this VIP. Is VIP September 18th. 19th. Uh, September 19th? 19th. Okay, September 19th at the Sony Hall. My man Doggy Diamonds, the cool herc of this podcast shit that we do. Uh, he's giving an event. I want to hear what Beanie has to say. If you in the New York area, come and rock with us. Black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way. I couldn't find a job. Couldn't find a prayer. Couldn't find a God. Couldn't find a prayer. Couldn't find a God. Black mass, man, it's time to rock. I had to find a way. I couldn't find a job.